Now get ready for the ultimate iPad setup showdown. From bedtime battles to education escapades. Join us as we sprinkle some tech magic and turn your child's device into a portal of infinite wonder. And don't forget, if you missed the previous episode, click the link in the corner. So this is now a student iPad. So let's now click on the settings and log into this student iPad. So at the top, it says sign in to your iPad. Now let's use the child Apple ID that we set up. When we log into the Apple ID, it's going to send us to the back to authentication. So let's put the code in. This will go to the parent phone number that was set up on the parent iPad. Okay, we're now logged in to the child iPad. So we can click on family here. We can see just like the parent iPad, the family outlined here, but the child account is set at the top. So now if I go and open one of the apps on here. Let's open the podcasting app. Because we haven't set up the screen time, we can see everything on the podcasting app. Now on the parent iPad, we're going to go into screen time and we're going to scroll down to the test child. There is my child. So let's tap on that. And now we can see all activity that's going on on this device. And you can see there all activity. Now this iPad, the child iPad only just been set up. So you can see there's only six minutes of activity on there. So we can see all activity and then we can see their settings, podcast 43 seconds and the news app has been used for two seconds. I can look at the day, I can look at the week. I can show them by categories. I can see the entertainment there. I can see information and reading. So this will give you an outline of everything that the student has been doing on the iPad. Now, as a parent, I can now set this up so other things can't be seen. So let's go back to the home screen on my child app. And what I want to do is I want to go back to the screen time and I want to set some of these limits. So, so let's look at downtime first. Now the downtime schedule is off. Let's, so let's tap on this and let's set the downtime for our student. Now we need to put the screen time passcode in. This is a passcode that the child should not know. Now we can start setting up the schedule for the downtime. I can do it for every day, I can customize days, and I can have downtime for different days. So Monday, for example. So on Monday, the iPad can't be used between eight o'clock on Monday evening, and on Tuesday between six o'clock in the morning. Now after six o'clock, the iPad can be used. Let's go to Friday, because that's today's day. Let's set this now. It can't be used from one o'clock to six o'clock on Saturday. All right, so you can see the time there on my iPad is 13.37. The iPad will not be able to use between those times. Now you can see on the child iPad, all of the apps are grayed out. So if I try to tap the podcasting app now, it's going to come up with a time limit. I can click OK to go back or I can ask for more time and I can send a request or enter the passcode. Now as a child, obviously the child wouldn't have the passcode, but they can send a request and that request will go to the parent asking for more time. There you can see, I'm going to tap on that message. There's a message gone to the parent and I can tap on that message and I can approve for another 15 minutes, approve for an hour, approve all day. So if I allow, I'm going to approve for 15 minutes, that will send back and you can see the request has been approved. And now the podcasting app will be able to be used for another 15 minutes. Let's go back into the parent settings. So we've looked at downtime. I can customize this as much as I want. Now let's have a look at app limits. 
So we can add a limit. Now we can choose by category. So if I tap on entertainment, then it will look and podcasting. It will look at the apps that are categorized under entertainment. So I'm going to tap on podcasting and then click next. Now that app limit, I'm going to allow my child to listen to podcasts for only two hours per any day. And then it's going to block at the end of the limit. Then I'm going to add that. Where this can be very useful is for social media. So here you can limit the amount of time that your children may be using social media apps. And that goes for any of the apps in here. So now let's go back and have a look at other of these features. There are various other features on here like communication limits which sets limits based on your contacts, communication safety. If we look into communication safety, this is about sensitive photographs. Always allow. Let's look at the apps that will always be allowed. So there may be certain apps that you want your child to use all the time, like the phone or the messages. But we could add other apps, maybe education apps that you want them to use all the time. So for example, we may want them to use the Translate app on a regular basis, and then we can add that. You can also look at the contacts, which contacts are allowed to be used all the time. So specific contacts are allowed to be contacted. So it might be uh, the parents number that they're allowed to contact all the time. However, you might want to limit some friends on that. Finally, content and privacy restrictions. This is very powerful because what this allows you to do is set that and then it, it stops your children from using the app store. Installing apps, we can not allow. We can delete deleting apps, we can not allow. So we can customize this however we want. Content restrictions, looking at movies, so allow all so we can say only those that are PG. And again, TV shows, we can only allow PG. So this becomes very customizable. Then we're looking at restrictions with web content. This is where we can customize what kind of websites the students can actually access. If we tap on limit adult websites, we can look at websites that are always allowed and never allowed, etc., etc. If we click on allowed websites, these are the only websites that are currently allowed, but we can add further websites, any other websites, the child will not be able to access them. There are various other options there that you could potentially explore. When we go back, we've also got share my location. So this allows the, the child to share their location to the parent. Then we've got allow passcode changes, account changes, etc, etc. Various different options there that can be explored. If your child finds out what the passcode is for screen time, you've got the option there to change the screen time passcode. Finally, if your child has two devices and they're logged on to the same Apple ID, this will be shown on this page and you can then switch between both, for example, an iPad and an iPhone and you can see the activity on both of those. That is using screen time for your child's device. So you want to know more? Why don't you click on one of the videos here and find out more about family sharing and screen time. Oh, and don't forget, if you like this, then subscribe and like my videos.